ladies and gentlemen, your host with the most, AvriLR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that like and subscribe button so we can keep on climbing even higher the 1200 ladder. I really do appreciate all the support. Happy almost July as it is June 30th, if I remember correctly. Yes, June 30th, a beautiful Friday evening here. Want to do another Yu-Gi-Oh! in-depth episode, and this time we are covering Sky Striker. Now, to give a little bit of background on the deck, also ignore my crudely printed out black and white uh, proxies. I'm going to go ahead and power shuffle here while we talk about Sky Striker. I want to do an episode on Sky Striker because we got the new Link monster, uh, Sky Striker Camilla, I believe, or Azalea, one of the two. I believe it's Azalea, uh, in Battles of Legend Monsters Revenge, as well as some new main deck monsters. And as of the making of this video, there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, work done with Sky Striker with the main deck monsters. Um, some people aren't even really playing Azalea from lists that I've seen. The only build that I've seen that's utilized the new main deck monsters was a really cheesy, and by cheesy I mean like uber cheesiness of the cheese Sky Striker build that used the Bamboo Sword cards. Uh, yeah, I tried that build for about five minutes and I realized that that build was garbage. <laughs> it's a very cheesy going second build where you can use the Bamboo Sword spells in order to like, you know, draw two cards off of Broken Bamboo, clear the opponent's boards with Original Bamboo Sword by attacking directly with Hayate. I personally feel that that's just a horrible way to play the deck. It, it, I would rather have my hand trapped and just be able to do something like that, uh, do something with those lines of play. Um, but Sky Striker is mostly a going second deck, even with the new support. The new Link monsters basically just allow you to play like one ofs of it. So like basically, from what I can tell, the ratio is just going to mostly be at least from what I've been testing, like one Zeke, one Kina, and then one Azalea. Um, so, you know, ratios may change as time goes by uh, with that. But Sky Striker, no matter what, is a going second deck. And I figured it would be interesting to talk about, like, combos, choke points, and all that. Because, honestly, to me, Sky Striker is like the new Gladiator Beast, although I've said that about Sword Soul. Uh, meaning, like, the deck that, like, a lot of people may go to um, at the start of, like, a new format will be either, like, Sky Striker or Sword Soul or whatever the case may be. Um... Also, I want to be sure I actually know what the heck I'm talking about. Yes, it's it's Azalea. So, I figured that we're going to do like what we did with the Purely video and go through some combos and talk about things that you can do with the deck. Because similar to Purely, there aren't any sort of direct lines of play that you can immediately go to and say, oh, this is how you play the deck. Other than like if you're doing like a going second OTK where if you open up Ray and Link Gage or a way to get to both of those cards, or if you just happen to draw into them with Pot of Desires, then yes, you can OTK. We're good. Excuse me, we're going to be going over um, that combo in a little bit. But first, I want to show like what a typical opening hand looks like. Don't worry about this build. Like Literally, you can just copy any sort of recent build that topped. Um, other than, I would say, the list from the Remote Dual YCS. That's just because, personally, I feel that Remote Dual YCSs aren't that relevant anymore to look at as data. But that's all besides the point. Um, this would be a typical opening hand of five cards, which... Honestly, this hand is absolutely fantastic. One of the great things about Sky Strikers is that there's a lot of different ways that you can play the deck either with Thrust or without Thrust. Maybe Lightning Storms, maybe not. Some play evenly, some don't. It's very malleable and adaptable in that regard to whatever the current format calls for. And having engaged it too, a lot of people say, well, the deck is still terrible. It's always been a rogue deck. It's never necessarily been terrible. It's just never been as amazing as like other top decks in the meta for a while. You you know, if Orcus was back at full power and Sky Striker had three engage again, yeah, we'd probably see like Orcus, Sky Striker, and like Sky Striker sub engines being played in a lot of different decks again. That's just how it is, right? But with an opening hand like this, you've got Imperm and Ash to stop the opponent from making plays. Most decks right now can't play through two hand traps, especially if it's something like Imperm and Ash. And then you've got Lightning Storm to clean up anything else. Eagle Booster and Multi Roll is not all that great. Um, but then we're also drawing into an Afterburners. Now, with this particular hand, you're probably thinking, well, Avery, this is an absolute brick. And yeah, like you're not totally wrong with that. And this is, I'm actually kind of glad we got this hand because this shows how Sky Striker can be in 2023. This is just sort of the risk you take with playing a deck like Sky Striker where, you know, if you don't open optimally and you open up like, say, too many hand traps or too many going second cards, you're not going to have the best hand possible. So in this example's case, you most likely used Imperm and Ash to stop the opponent from making a board, which is fine because, I mean, you know, if you're able to kind of stall the game state out to where, you know, the opponent's just kind of doing chip damage to you and you're able to keep on drawing and making plays, 
then you're going to be able to, you know, still win regardless. You know, with a hand like this, you use the impermanent ash. Maybe the opponent sets a couple back rows of bluff. You can lightning storm their back row. Now they probably have a clear field, and because they weren't really able to play the game because you used two hand traps on them, they probably don't have a whole lot of cards left in their hand. So you can just, like, end with, like, maybe setting the eagle booster and some other stuff and passing turn. If the game comes back to you, you're drawing into a Widow Anchor. Maybe you can do something with that and take one of their monsters. Maybe beat over for some damage. Overall, I mean, I'm kind of drawing at straws at that at this point. Uh, so, obviously, not the best opening hand. But that is the risk that you take with playing with this deck. Um, overall, it is a fairly consistent deck. I would say, like, maybe 85 to 90% consistency rate, 10% being bricky hands. Um, again, that's just the risk you take with playing a deck like Striker. It's not always going to happen, and it can happen to any deck. Uh, and yes, the Razor Ultis, uh, we ended up doing some trading at the Boca Raton Regional that we got uh, 29th place out with Purely Sprite to get these Ultis. It's very nice. Um, now, all of the explanation and that out of, this, out of the way, I do want to explain the going second Sky Striker OTK uh, Electric Boogaloo combo. Um, and how it works, and then we'll kind of do, you know, other opening hands and stuff and go from there. Uh, so you're going to start off after you've broken the opponent's board, uh, of course, with like Lightning Storm or using hand traps, things like that. We're going to normal summon the Ray. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go to battle phase and attack for 1500 off of the Ray. That's pretty hot. We just did some damage. We're going to go ahead and activate Sky Striker Ray's effect to tribute it in order to go for Hayate. Uh, now, of course, Hayate has the effect that it can attack direct. Whether they have monsters or not, it doesn't matter. We're going to attack for 1,500 damage again. So now they've taken 3,000. We're going to activate the effect of Hayate. In order to dump, you would think we would dump Engage or something, but that's not what we're going to do. We're actually instead going to dump out our one-of copy of uh, Sky Striker Ace Rose. We're doing this because we want a light and dark monster in the grave for Link Age. So Rose being a light and then Ray being the dark. They've taken 3,000. Now that we're still in battle phase, we'll go ahead and activate Sky Striker Ace Link Age in order to send off our Hayate in order to go for our Kagari. Kagari's effect is going to activate, getting us back the Link Age because this card's not once per turn. And then because we have a Light and Dark in our grave, it's going to gain 1,000 attack. In this case, we don't have any other spells in the grave. So we're just going to swing for 25. They've now taken 5,500 points of damage. We're then going to activate that same Link Age again, tributing off the Kagari. In order to go for Shizuku, once again, it's going to be at 25 because of Link Age with having a Light and Dark. And then we're going to swing for 25, and that's exactly 8,000 points of damage per game. At its most basic value, that's how you can just want to many ways OTK uh, with a Sky Striker in this deck. Um, you've got to be playing three Link Gauge and three Ray. I mean, it's just so amazing in this deck, especially if you're deciding to go down the route of playing Pot of Desires. Um, obviously, with playing so many quick plays, you can't get to it off of the uh, Triple Tactic Thrust if you decide to go down that route. Um, but regardless, it's a really great way to cheese wins, especially if you want to OTK, because outside of this, Striker can have a little bit of difficulty with OTKing, unless, like, you know, you kind of whittle down the opponent a little bit, because this is a control deck, um, and then kind of going from there. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and try and do another test hand. And going to try and shuffle this up again. Hopefully we don't break this time. <laughs> Uh, I mean, you at least were able to see how the deck can kind of, like, stall the opponent out with hand traps and hit them with a lightning storm and stuff. Uh, so, one, two, have to play the hand facing me, just easier. Uh, four, five, so we hit the ash, so we're obviously, you just always assume that you're going to use the ash. I'm just going to be doing that for examples case. So our open, a five card opening hand was these four and the ash. Then we're going to draw for turn because we're, remember, we're a going second deck. Uh, and we're going to hit Ash again. So if the opponent like tries to do some kind of searching or something during our turn, remember that you can use an Ash on your turn. It doesn't have to be during the opponent's turn. Uh, but this hand's disgusting, actually. Um, you Ash the opponent, so you're able to choke them out a little bit. If you're playing against Branded, you Ash their Branded Fusion, of course, and then they're just kind of sitting there with a big old boo-boo stain in their pants. Um, but, I mean, Engage, Link Gage, Horn Drone, Afterburner, this, this is great. Um... So the way that I would play this hand, one of the things with Sky Striker is that it all depends on the opponent's end board state. You know, if you're playing against something like Branded and you Ash their Branded Fusion, they end on like, say, I don't know, a Sanctifier Dragon with like Branded Lost in their back row and like nothing else, then yeah, you know you're going to probably be able to 
honestly like get game in that case because they're probably not going to have much in their grave if you actually brain infusion so it all depends on how they end uh on their board um but regardless i'm going to play this as if i'm trying to break apart a board not necessarily if they brick or anything like that because if they brick if they have nothing on their board we have engage and link gauge so like we already have the otk um so let's just go ahead and play this as if like we're just trying to break their board apart right uh, so we use the Ash on their turn. We're going to go and use Afterburner to pop one of their monsters. I'm doing this first because I want to eliminate any sort of um, issues on the board before I go for the Engage line. If they have the Ash, they have the Ash. Like, I'll just go screw myself. At least we have Hornet Drones as a backup play. Um, in this case, if they have another monster, I could activate the Hornet Drones to go for Kagari to get back the Afterburner to pop another monster. Um, but in this case, I'm going to say that they don't. Uh, well, you know what? Let's just let's let's go down that line. Let's let's see how we end this because we already have game with link agent and engage. It's just a matter of clearing up the board. So we're gonna activate Hornet Drone to go for the token. We're gonna send off the token or to make Kagari. Kagari's effect is gonna activate, getting us back uh, afterburner, and then we're gonna activate afterburner to pop another one of their monsters because we're just that good. <laughs> um, and yeah, then we'll go ahead and activate the engage. Can we still get game? If we make that line, I feel like we can. Uh, we go for Ray here, right? Or would we want to go for something else? We could go for Ray, but then the problem is if we normal summon it, then we have a monster in our main monster zone. Uh, so I could just go, well, actually, I could just go for another Link Age and still have game, right? Because, uh, like, you could do attack into that. It would have, you have uh, three spells in the grave. Um... So if you, if you wanted to, this is actually something else I should mention. If you wanted to, like let's say you activate Engage and you don't have any monsters on your field, you can go Link Age to send off the Engage to still get out a uh, Link monster. So that is something that you can do. Um, at this point, you just have to debate on if you want to use Engage to like either go for Ray or something else. Um, in this case, I'm going to use Engage to... Let's see how this plays out. I'm going to say that like we go for multi-roll yeah like let's let's just go for multi-roll um because the thing is with us already having a link monster on the field uh we can't just do the normal like okay ray play and then go from there um so we're gonna go ahead and go battle phase swing for uh extra 300 damage so we're gonna swing for 18 and then since we're still in battle phase uh we're gonna go ahead and activate the link age uh to send off the kagari in order to go for the Hayate, and then Hayate will be able to attack direct. That's another 1500 damage. Hayate is going to be able to activate to dump out. I'm going to go ahead and dump the, since we don't have a ray yet, go ahead and dump out the ray just to at least have it in the grave. Now, something else I could have done here was uh, instead of grabbing multi roll, which I'm sorry, you should actually activate this before you do the link gauge, obviously, so that you can at least set something. Um, I could have also grabbed like another link gauge because then like I could go link gauge, tag out Hayate for Suzuku and do another 17, or excuse me, do another 15. So then you're looking at 3000 plus 1800, which is 48. The opponent's sitting at 32. You could do that line if you don't mind wasting a second link gauge. Um, I mean, it, it kind of just all depends on what the board state is. Like if you're near time, that's really good because you obviously want to get the opponent's life points as low as you can. Um, this is just honestly one of many plays. De again, depending on what the board state is from the opponent that you can do. So, you know, don't take these combos as gospel. This is meant to teach you how to play the deck in some effective manner. Um, so we're going to say that we went ahead and do that. Um, we're going to go ahead and go main phase two, send off Hayate for the Shizuku. And I should also mention that the reason why I sent off uh, Rose with the Hayate is because you want to establish Ray in your grave as quickly as you can, because then that way, if they dark hole you, if they do something to your Sky Striker, or Ace Link, whether they attack into it, whatever, then you can use the Ray to bring it back out and then, you know, be able to go into different Ace Link monsters from there. Uh, it's very much a cornerstone uh, to your deck. Rose is basically just meant to be there as like an extender to help you go into Zeke or whatever the case may be, or to just push for damage. Um, so since we were smart and activated the multi-roll before we played the Link Age, we're going to be able to set one card at the end of the turn, but that's not all because we're going to go end phase Shizuku effect to grab one from our deck with a different name than the cards in the grave. We're going to go for Widow Anchor. Now you're probably wondering, Avery, why in the world are you going to go for Widow Anchor? Well, let me show you. 
Still in end phase, once the Shizuku resolves. Also, I should mention that whenever Hayate attacks and uses Effective Dump, that's in damage step, so don't let people cheat you. We're going to go ahead and activate Widow Anchor and target our own Shizuku to negate its effects at the end of the turn, right? With multi roll being on the field, now on a new chain, we're going to activate multi rolls effect. We've activated both Link Age and the Widow Anchor this turn. So now we're able to set two cards instead of just one. So the Widow Anchor that we added off of the Shizuku, we're now going to be able to set to our field. And now we can choose whether we want to set Link Age, uh, Engage, Hornet Drones, Afterburners to our field. I typically like to set Quick Plays because I like to be able to be interactive with the opponent. I don't really feel like I'm going to need Link Age that bad, but I feel like Link Age is going to be better than having Hornet Drones. So I'm going to go ahead and set the Link Age. Uh, so you end up setting uh, Widow Anchor and Link Age, and then this is your end board. Um, if you were able to do the 4800 damage combo instead, then that's great. Worst case, you have the Ash Blossom, and then you've got the multi roll that sets you both the Link Age and the Widow Anchor. Um, the little Widow Anchor Shizuku combo is very common in Sky Striker. If you haven't seen it before, then this is how you do it. Um, it's fantastic for setting a Widow Anchor or any sort of quick play you need to your field that you search off of the Shizuku as long as you have the multi-roll established. Just remember that once you use these, they'll get banished because you brought them both back with the multi-roll. This is why you usually play, you know, two to three copies of most of your uh, Sky Striker quick plays. So that was just one example. Obviously, you saw from me trying to figure out what to search. There's a lot of different variations and lines that you can do uh, in building a board. That's why I really emphasize it all comes down to how the opponent builds their board. If they just bricked and set a couple back row, well then, you know, if you decide to play jamming waves, which really no build is right now, then you can use engage to get, you know, jamming waves or whatever, or just use it to go for the ray, and then you just do the whole link gauge ray combo and you're good. So that was hand number one. Let's go ahead and do another hand. Something that I want to talk about too while I'm shuffling the deck here is that Sky Striker is also a great deck for players who want to get better at uh, utilizing their card advantage to the best of their ability. So really getting as much value out of each card that you play to their fullest extent. Sky Striker is a fantastic deck for that. I mean, I remember playing Sky Striker Orcist a few years ago at a uh, local Jacksonville regional here, actually, and I just barely bubbled out. I was X and two, uh, and I lost in the last round. I was X and three, and had it been a, a little bit of a bigger regional, I would have gotten my invite, but I unfortunately bubbled in the last round. But I saw a lot of success with Orcus Sky Striker, and I really like how the deck played. Uh, I guess that's why a lot of people want Harpoor to come back because they really enjoyed the deck. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, even with Orcus Sky Striker, maybe to a lesser degree since you have the explosive plays of Orcus. Um, you utilize the same aspect with that in getting the most out of your cards as best you can. You know, instead of just summoning Ray and using its effect to make a Kagari and whatever, no, attack with it first, then use the quick effect, kind of like a Cosmo monster, to get out another monster to do even more damage. So let's see, we open up uh, Widow Anchor, Shark, Cannon, Ash, and Engage, and Afterburner. <laughs> Anytime you open up Engage, it's basically like a blank card. Like, this is what I tell people all the time whenever I play tests like purely or something that like the purely quick plays are basically just blank cards. Um, so, th and this is only five cards. So you're most likely gonna use Ash because I mean, Ash is just always that good. So then we're drawing for turn cause we're going second deck uh, and we hit Imperm. Now remember, if you have no cards on your field, you can play Imperm, it doesn't have to be during the opponent's turn. So we're gonna assume that, the, that we just like Imperm some sort of monster in the game. We Imperm their Baron because I don't know, we're, we're just that good at the game. Um, and again, I'm going to play this hand as if like I'm just trying to break apart their board. I may not necessarily have to use an afterburner, just depending on how their board is built. But yeah, we ash them on their turn, and then we imperm once we do a return. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and afterburner something. Uh, just whatever monster we don't want on the table. And then here, we could Widow Anchor like another monster if they have like some sort of negate up. Uh, and then we could also Shark Cannon to banish something in order to get three spells, and then use the engage to search. Um... Do remember that with Shark Cannon, whatever monster you summon can't attack, so it's basically just used for extenders. Um, but the thing is, is that because we're such a resource-driven deck, I don't know if I really want to waste my resources like that. Um, obviously, if the opponent has some sort of Omni Negate, I'm going to use the Widow Anchor. Um, but yeah, let, let's... Uh, no, let's, let's say that we hold on to it, right? Um, Let's say that we go Shark Cannon, banish whatever out of their graveyard, just like it's a Bice Deal, a Tear Element, whatever. Uh, and then we're left with this. 
So we can go engage. Um, if they have a monster effect that we don't like, then obviously we can go Widowmaker and then go engage, search for Ray, and then draw. Um, just depends on the board state. Uh, so let me let me go ahead and kind of explain this. So in one instance, this this is kind of weird since we're only talking about two cards, but this is how kind of in depth you can go with Striker. In one sense, we can go Widowmaker to get a monster effect that we don't like, engage, search for, I would search for Ray at this point because I need something on the table, and then draw a card. If we draw a Link Gauge, we win. Um, in another case, if we would rather take one of the opponent's monsters and link off with it to go into like Dark Charmer and then climb up into like Unicorn or Access Code lines, we can do that. Um, the engage would still get us the Ray. Uh, we could go Widow Anchor, take their monster, use Ray to like make Zeke to banish yet another monster if they have still another one that we don't want to deal with. And then do plays from there. Like we could then go Kagarian to engage to search again and then draw. And like that would probably be game because we could go for Link Gauge at that point. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say that they have a monster effect that we don't like and just go from there. Um, actually, the other line sounds. <laughs> I mean, the other line sounds cooler, but we're just going to do this. Um, worst case, I can just kind of reset it, and then, you know, we can go from there. So we'll Widow Anchor a, a monster. We're going to go Engage. do ga do ga do ga do all the fun things. We're going to go for our sexy Ultimate Rare Ray, and then on Resolution, it's not on the activation of Engage, it's on the resolution of the Engage that you choose whether or not you want to draw. So do keep that in mind. There's, uh, there's a few nifty tricks in this deck that are good to know about. Like, for example, Area Zero... The area zero, if you use the effect in target ray, you can chain ray to tribute it to summon out a sky striker, and then you can still excavate the top three. Um, and then we're gonna draw off the engage. This should really be a forbidden chalice, but Book of Moon basically does the same thing. It's it's another way to stop a monster. If the opponent has a rise heart, we probably already dealt with it with all the negation we had, but if not, well then Book of Moon the crap out of the Arise Heart. Um, so in this case, we're at the, the deck's most basic function right now, actually. So we're gonna go ahead and summon Ray. Swing for 15, and then we're going to just do the same thing that we did before, Sugar Boo Bear. We're going to activate the effect of Ray, attribute it, summon out Kagari. Kagari's going to activate, uh, going for, yeah, you usually, like, I would say 95% of the time, go for Engage. Uh, and then we're going to swing for 15 plus 1, 2, 3, yeah, so 1,800. So we've done 28, 9, 3, 1, 32. So we've done 3,300. And then we have both Engage and Book of Moon, and we're going to be able to draw again off of the Engage. This is where the Advantage bubble starts to kind of form, and you just sort of win from here. Um, you did 3,300 points of damage, so the opponent's already on the back foot. You've broken apart their board between the Ash that you use on their turn, the Imperm, and the Widow Anchor, and the Afterburners. Like, they shouldn't have much of a board at this point unless they just vomited on the field. And, like, even then, you probably were still able to play through a decent amount. Um... You could also, if you wanted to dump something into the grave, you could do um, Ray Tribute to go into Hayate, and then Hayate sends, like, say, Rose. Um, that's actually the more proper line. Because even though you lose out on the damage, you want to be able to get your resources into the grave so that you can get them back. Um, so instead, you could go Hayate, attack for 15, and then dump, say, uh, Rose. Uh, so then that gives you a light and dark in case you hit like Link Age. Then in your main phase two, even though you're losing a little bit out on damage, you're able to do 3,000. So you're only losing out, excuse me, on 300 damage. That's not a big deal because you're not going to be OTKing anyway, even if you did the Kagari first. So you link off in main phase two with the Hayate uh, to make the Kagari. The Kagari then gets you the engage. So even though you're losing out on 300 damage, you've been able to give yourself another resource in the form of Rose, because remember, if the opponent has a monster in the extra monster zone and it leaves the field by one of your effects, then you can bring out the Rose and negate another one of their monster effects. Uh, so Kagari grabs us the Engage. We're going to go ahead and activate the Engage and get another Search and draw another card. Uh, and in this case, we have the Widow Anchor in the graveyard, um, and I'm also going to be getting a Search of... Eagle Booster off of the Shizuku, because if we grab Multi-Roll here, then that will allow us to set something. So, yeah, let's go for Multi-Roll and draw and see what we can grab out of this here. If we hit a Sky Striker spell, then that's just going to be sexy. Uh, so that, and then we draw, we draw into Hamp. So, Hamp is basically a Kaiju. Um... It's not terrible to have in your hand. It's also 2,500 if you need to push for game. Um, it's it's not the worst draw. It's not a quick play, so it's not like the best thing in the world. We're going to go ahead and activate the uh, multi-roll. 
Uh, we're gonna set the Book of Moon. I'm gonna leave it face up just so that you know it's Book of Moon. Uh, and then we're gonna send off the Kagari to go into Shizuku. And then end phase, we're gonna do the same thing that we did before. We have to search for something that's not in our grave. Um, so you could search for like Eagle Booster here and then use the effect of multi-roll to um, set it. So like we can go Eagle Booster, Eagle Booster, activate on Shizuku, and then the multi-roll can set the Widow Anchor. You could also alternatively um, use Engage to instead of grabbing um, multi-roll, you could have just used it to grab the Widow Anchor, and then you would basically be in the same spot, except you wouldn't be able to like set the Eagle Booster, it would basically still be in your deck, or you just grab something else. So this would kind of be your ending board. There's a few different variations to this, just depending on you know what kind of board the opponent ends on. Um, but this is Sky Striker in a nutshell. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. I will do my best to answer them, like I said. I know I keep harping on this, but this really is like how you play the deck. It all depends on how the opponent ends their first turn with their board. Uh, you're a going second deck similar to something like rank eight Axis. You side deck to go first, since most likely the opponent's gonna make you go first. Um, because like if, if you go first in this deck, like if it's game one and then the opponent wins the die roll and says you go first, then really the only thing that you can hope to do is hope that you open up multiple engages so that you can search for like multiple widow anchors and then like you're gonna end on like Shizuku with back row and pass and hope that that's enough. Um, that's not the worst thing in the in the world depending on how you open. Like if you open up like Imperm Ash and like engage and like some other like widow anchor stuff, eagle boosters, whatever, that's actually really solid going first hand because the opponent's got to play through hand traps and they got to play through the back row. Um, so that is one instance where it can be good. You're just not always going to open on that way. Like if you open up Hamp going first, like you're just, you're sitting with basically one less card in your hand. You're just playing with a four card hand. You're sitting, you know, with a boo-boo stain in your pants. So guys, let me know down in the comments what you think about this. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.